so now we shall be discussing about hip joint dislocation okay so we shall discuss about hip joint dislocation hip joint dislocation now in case of hip joint dislocation basically there are two different types of hip joint dislocation one is called as congenital dislocation another one is called as acquired dislocation okay so congenital in the sense i hope you know what is congenital right so one is called as congenital dislocation and the other one is called as acquired dislocation okay so one is called as congenital another one is called as acquired dislocation so first we shall discuss about congenital dislocation now in case of congenital dislocation what is the important thing you need to know the important thing are there might be only two causes okay so what are these causes cause number one and cause number two what are these two causes are for example by the time of the birth if the joint capsule is very loose okay because the joint for let us say this is the acetabulum and this is the head of the femur so it fits into this and i have already talked about the ligaments the capsular ligaments the acetabular labrum and everything right so all of these ligaments they stabilize this joint for example if these ligaments are weak then what will happen the joint capsule becomes too loose too flexible so joint capsule which is very flexible very easily there can be a subluxation i mean very easily there can be a dislocation okay so two two causes the first cause being loose joint capsule the joint capsule is very very loose at the time of birth okay and ne next important thing is that either acetabulum or the head of the femur hypoplasia might have developed second important cause is that there might be under development or there might be hypoplasia of the acetabulum or the head of the femur so when there is hypoplasia of acetabulum and if the femur head is normal but still the femur head cannot fit into this right even if it fits right it will very easily dislocate or else let us say if the head of the femur is not stable i mean if the head of the femur is underdeveloped so perfectly it will not lock into the acetabulum inside forming a hip joint right so two important things one is joint capsule might be loose at birth right giving over flexibility which will lead to hip dislocation and second important thing is hypoplasia second important thing is there can be hypoplasia of acetabulum not only acetabulum and also femoral head hypoplasia of acetabulum as well as femoral head so this kind of dislocation is called congenital dislocation okay and next important dislocation is your acquired dislocation next important dislocation is your acquired dislocation and where do you see this acquired dislocations most commonly in dashboard injuries for example you are sitting in a car and if there is a hit right so what will happen is that the femur dislocates posteriorly okay for example you are sitting in a car so when a vehicle hits right so the dashboard of the car whatever is there that will hit your knees and your femur your femur whatever is there your femur whatever is there this femur is pushed back when it is pushed back the dislocation which you get is posterior dislocation so most commonly in case of acquired dislocation in case of dashboard injuries what kind of dislocation you get posterior dislocation okay so in acquired dislocation acquired dislocation is the most common in dashboard injuries in dashboard injury okay so there are three types of acquired dislocation which you see what are the three different types one is anterior dislocation of hip another one is posterior dislocation of hip another one is central dislocation okay central dislocation anterior posterior as well as central so out of all this which is the most common dislocation posterior dislocation is the most common which is the less common dislocation anterior dislocation is the less common which is the least common dislocation is central dislocation least common dislocation would be your central dislocation now apart from this uh, dislocation the second important disease as uh, clinical point regarding the hip i wanted to talk is perthes disease okay so that would be perthes disease 
and what is the other name for Perthes disease guys this is also called as pseudococcalgia okay this is also called as pseudococcalgia pseudococcalgia is the other name for Perthes disease so what will happen in this Perthes disease is that if you look at the head of the femur right the head of the femur right there is destruction of the head of the femur okay and after destruction, the head of the femur is round, right? So it will be destroyed and it becomes flat. So such kind of disease is called as Perthes disease. So in Perthes disease, what will happen? There is destruction and flattening. Destruction and flattening of head of the femur. Head of the femur, right? So because of this what is happening, because of this there is increase in joint space. Because of this what is happening, there is increase in the joint space, okay. So this is what is called as your Perthes disease or pseudococcalgia. So all of you just look here and because of increase in joint space, obviously see for example, this is the acetabulum again, this is the head of the femur, it is perfectly locked. If the head of the femur is destroyed, right? So half part of the head of the femur is destroyed. Then what will happen? There is a joint space here. What is the space consisting of? This space was previously consisting of a healthy femur bone, right? But now it is destroyed and the bone has become flat. So obviously you see a gap here. Because of this gap, there can be easy dislocation anywhere, okay? So if you look at an x-ray, pelvic x-ray, you'll understand here. See, all of you just concentrate on this point. This is the hip region, the right hip joint and you can see that there is flattening of the bone, right? Flattening of the bone over here, flattening of the head of the femur. Because of this, there can be dislocation and this is most common seen in case of children. And this is what is called as Perthes disease, okay? Next important thing. Next important thing you need to know is that neck shaft angle. So what is meant by neck shaft angle is that, for example, if I am drawing a line all the way like this, okay? And next, if I'm drawing another line all the way like this. Now, if you look at the angle here, this is the angle between the neck of the femur and the shaft of the femur, right? So this angle is called as neck shaft angle, okay? This angle is called as neck shaft angle. Now, in this, in this neck shaft angle, two important things you need to know. What are those two important things? Two important things are neck shaft angle in adults, neck shaft angle in children so in which age group the neck shaft angle will be more obviously in the children the neck shaft angle will be more when compared to adults so in children the neck shaft angle is around 160 degrees whereas in adults the neck shaft angle is around 120 degrees okay so there are two conditions where this neck shaft angle can increase or reduce the condition where the neck shaft angle will increase is called as coxa valga the condition where the neck shaft angle is decreased is called as coxa vara okay so there are two conditions coxa valga and coxa vara so here we have got two important conditions these two important conditions one is coxa valga what is coxa valga in coxa valga there is increase in neck shaft angle what is coxa vara so we have got coxa vara or vara so here there is decrease in the angle so what causes this and what causes this coxa vara so can anyone yourself over there who is watching the video can you tell what causes this increase in neck shaft angle it is because of hip dislocation and what kind of hip dislocation congenital hip dislocation so in case of congenital hip dislocation, congenital hip dislocation, there can be coxa valga. So what causes a decrease in the angle? Decrease in the angle is caused when there is fracture of the neck of the femur. Fracture of neck of femur, okay. Along with that, even in case of Perthes disease even in case of Perthes disease. So even in these two cases, there can be the problem here, coxa vara as well as coxa valga. Okay, right. So this is the concept. And now if you go down here, right, 
so here another important uh, point i want to tell you is that if for example if i'm drawing a line right so all of you look here if i'm drawing a line this is the line that is touching the superior border of the obturator foramen right and also it is touching the inferior border or inferior surface of the neck of the femur right so on the other side also see superior border of obturator foramen and the inferior surface of the neck of the femur so this is a perfect arch which you can see this arc is called as shenton's arc or shenton's line shenton's arc or shenton's line so when is this line getting disrupted if you get any kind of femoral neck fractures right i'll show you that example also if there is any kind of femoral neck fractures then this line gets disrupted okay you so you take an x ray and if you are not able to find whether there is a fracture or no just draw this line and if you draw this line you will get to know whether this line is straight perfect arch or an irregular arch right so if there is a perfect arch then it it is not a fracture if there is no perfect arch then it can be fracture of the neck of femur right so shenton's line is mainly used to look at fracture neck of femur fracture neck of femur so all of you just look at this for example in x ray number 1 x ray number 2 so x ray number 1 i am not able to find whether there is shenton's arch or no so first of all let me draw this line see from here i am drawing the line all the way and this is the inferior surface so this is an arch which has been formed let us look at x ray number 2 so from the inferior surface i am drawing and here i have got this one now look at both the x rays is a perfect arch that is formed no so this gives as an explanation that he in both of these there is fracture of neck of the femur fracture of the neck of the femur right 